greetings to us all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are welcome to take our seats. Uh, I want to thank God for the presence of our pastors, our district pastors, and our panel of speakers who have been ministering to us the whole week. I believe that each and every one of us here, we agree that this has been more than a car service. This has been like an engine overall that has been taking place in our lives as believers. Thank you, Pastor, for organizing such a powerful wed festival. Our lives are no longer going to be the same again, but we have been lifted up to another level, especially if you are in Zimbabwe, staying in Zimbabwe like me. The powerful word that we have been hearing from Monday up to today, this has been like, uh, we now have shock, spiritual shock absorbers inside of our spirits and inside of our hearts to the extent that even if I go in a shop, I'm not shocked at how the prices are rising up every day. I now have spiritual shock absorbers because we've been fed the word of God. We've been taught about salvation. We've been taught about living in the kingdom of God. We've been taught about the word of God and how we should exercise it with faith in our lives. And this will cause us to have spiritual shock absorbers in such a world that we are living in. Uh, this morning for the time that I'm going to share with the brethren, forgive this sadop for what is happening. Uh, I'm going to talk to us, to share with us on a message that I've entitled, The Power of the Word in the Life of a Believer. The power of the word in the life of a believer. The power of the word of God in the life of a believer. Our reader, we can go together to the book of uh, Isaiah 55 verse 10. We are going to start from there. The power of the word in the life of a believer. The power of the word of God in the life of a believer. The power of the word of God in the life of a believer. Our father, uh, Professor E.H. Guti, says in this book, uh, The Local Church, why people come to church? People come to church to feel repaired. They only go home with joy when they have been repaired. And what repairs the life of a person is the word of God. It is, the only, it is only the word that repairs my life as a believer. And our father says, people come to church to be repaired. We have been here the whole week. And we will continue coming to church, coming to different services. Uh, as we continue with our Christian work. The purpose is for us to continue being repaired through the word of God. To repair is to mend something that has been torn, that has been torn apart, something that has been broken, and it needs to be repaired. And the only thing that repairs a believer in his life is the word. So I'm sharing with us on the power of the word in the life of a believer. Ephesians 4, Hebrews 4, 12 says, the word of God is quick, it is active, it is powerful. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. That scripture, I love it. Our reader, let's read Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 verse 10. For yes. as the rain comes down uh -huh. and the snow from heaven, uh -huh. and do not return there, uh -huh. but water the earth, yes. and make it bring forth and bud, uh -huh. that it may give seed to the sower and mm -hmm. bread to the eater. Yes. So shall my word be that uh -huh. goes forth from my mouth. Mm -hmm. It shall not return to me void, mm -hmm. but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Pastor Slivasi, so can we have that vision, please?
Thank you very much. This is the message version. I like it so much. So we read the King James and we also read the message. So uh, the writer of the book of Isaiah here, he says, As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Here we see the effects of rain. Very soon the farmers will be preparing for the rain season. And they will uh, buy their fertilizers, have their crop in time. So that uh, when the rains start coming, they start their projects of farming. They plant the maize, groundnuts, uh, ETC, all the farm produce that we plant. It is the rain that waters the earth so that the earth may produce seeds for the sower. And it also bring bread to the eater. It is only the rain. There is no other miracle that will cause crop, crops to grow healthy. And so that a person, a farmer, will end up yielding good crop from his field. It is the work of the rain. And now the book of Isaiah here continues to say, So shall my word be. This is God we are speaking now. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth and it shall not return to me void. Let's mark that word void. But it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. There is power in the word of God in the life of a believer. A believer who knows the word of God, who reads and meditates upon the word of God and doesn't end, end there, but practices it in his life and lives a life best, a word best life, is a different person from the person who just runs their life on their own. There is a word that we have read here that God's word will, return, will not return to him void. This is God who is speaking to us. I want us to understand this, brethren, this morning, that God's word, when it is sent into our lives, when he sends it in our lives, just as what the rains does, that when it waters the earth, the earth will bring forth food seed for the sower, and it also brings bread for the eater. The word of God will victorious life. He will live a victorious life. I want to challenge somebody this morning. 
Let the word be active in your life. For how long am I going to hear testimonies from other people of what God has been doing in their lives? Acts 10.34 says, God is not a respecter of persons. So what he does for my brother there, it gives me encouragement that through using his word, what has never happened in my family or in my generation, it will start with me. But the secret is in this word. It is both an offensive and defensive weapon. I attack the enemy using the word of God. Where doors seem to be stubborn and they refuse to be opened. I open that door by the word of God. I open that door by the word of God. When the enemy attacks me, I defend myself by the word of God. I defend myself by the word of God. Acts 19 verse, Acts 19 verse 20 it says, And the word grew and it prevailed. And the word grew and it prevailed. The only thing that prevails above every storm that comes along in life is the word of God. This morning I was reading Psalm 97 verse 5. And there's a scripture that blessed me there which said, Mountains melt like wax before the presence of the, of, of the Lord. Mountains melt like wax before the presence of God. Where did I get that from? I got it from the word of God. So when something that comes like a mountain comes in life, along in life, because life is like that, it is full of challenges. I will I tell it. Where art thou, you mountain? You will be leveled. You will become like a plain. Because the word has told me that mountains, they melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. Mountains, they melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. There is power in the word of God. There is power in the word of God. There is power in the word of God. Gone is the time for us as believers to be continue crying because of what is surrounding me. I used to cry in the past before I realized that I was crying, but God has given me a full package. I've got a full armory that I can use to fight. So these days, even when things seem not to be well outwardly, I know that my Redeemer liveth. My Redeemer liveth. I know that the word of God says, Fear not, for I am with you. Even though you walk through the fire, I will be with you. The waters will not wash you away. The flames of fire will not sweep you away. Where am I getting this? I'm getting it from the word of God. And I, I, I live it. I practice it in my life. And I see doors opening. Stubborn doors being opened. Because there is power in the word of God. Tell your neighbor that there is power in the word of God. There is power in the word of God. It is only the word that can cause me to walk through the midnight hour and come out as a, vi a victor in the morning. As long as we are living, people of God, we are still in this flesh. Midnight hours are sure to come. Midnight hours are sure to come. Midnight hours are sure to come. But it is only the word that will help me and cause me to walk out and come out as a victor during the midnight hour. What happened in the book of Acts? Because these guys, Paul and Silas, had realized, had learned from Psalms, from the word of God, the power that is, that is in praising God, that was in praising God. They used the Psalms, they used the hymns, and it happened at midnight when Paul and Silas were singing hymns, were singing Psalms and hymns. Uh, the jail realized that today, these are wrong kind of people who are here. These guys are not the caliber to continue being in here. And as they were praising God, as they were singing psalms, 
And as they were worshipping, I'm sure they were quoting from the book of Psalms. That is the word of God. They were saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And there's that scripture which says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they protect me. And they realize that we may be in prison physically, but God will deliver us. And it happened. I want to encourage us, brethren. Let the word be your language as a believer. Let the word be your language as a, as a believer. At work, people are discussing that things are hard. I bring answers or I bring uh, 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 encouragement and comfort to them by using the word of God. I tell them, brethren, guys, yes, things may appear to be hard, but I want to tell you what God says. This is the opportunity for us as believers even to bring more souls to Christ through the encouragement that we give them through the word of God. Because to tell the truth, the people are in hardship. But it is only those who know the word and who use it that will bring hope to people that are losing hope. Some who want even to commit suicide because of what is surrounding them. I will encourage them. David says in the book of Psalm 37 verse 25, I've been young and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he's seed begging bread. And this will cause me to realize, even if there's bread shortage, even if I may not have uh, a lot of stuff to splash around, but my needs are met by God. He gives us the provision, the daily bread he provides. I get it from the word of God. I get it from the word of God. I want to encourage you, my brother and my sister, this morning. There is power in the word of God. Let us use the word of God. In the face of every adversity, the word will prevail. Let us use the word of God. In the face of everything, it will prevail. In the book, The Integrity of God's Word, our Father says, the word of God is God's voice to us. So when I speak it, it is like God is talking directly, addressing my situation, addressing my challenge, and nothing can withstand the power that is in the word of God. Nothing can withstand that. My reasoning cannot prevail when I'm faced with situations, but it is only the word that will prevail. It is only the word that will prevail. So these days I'm learning when things are not okay, I'm learning to quote the word. I'm learning to quote the word. I'm learning to confess the word. Mark 11, 23, what does it say? You shall have whatsoever you shall say if you don't doubt. So if I say, Chokwadi, teacher, teacher, but I say, my God, will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Psalm 34 verse 10, that's one of the scriptures that is on the letter that our father wrote for us this year. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord, they lack no good thing. What am I doing? I want my life to line up with the word of God. They are stubborn situations that can come in life, people of God. But they only line up with the word of God. When as a believer, I know how to use that word. When I use it, and it will not return to God void, but it will accomplish the, desires, the desired purposes. I want to say someone to someone this morning, there are things that are surrounding you, that have been worrying you, during the night, you have been, people may think you have been sleeping, but you have been having sleepless nights because of the challenges that have been overwhelming you. And your pillow has been being, is, is being wet in the night when people think I'm sleeping. But I want to say to us, 
There is power in using the word of God. There is a God who is a servant of his word. He has things to perform it. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. What he promises, will he not do it? What he promises, will he not do, do it? If it is sickness, I do not personalize it. It's not mine. It's not mine. I may be sick, but I won't remain sick. I kick out the sickness by the word of God. Our Father encourages, kick it out by the word of God. I kick it out by the word of God. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement for my peace was upon him. And by his stripes I, I'm healed. I continue declaring it. Not for one minute. Not for one week. Not for one month. But I continue. Even if the symptoms persist, I continue. Even if the symptoms persist, I continue. Even if the, system, the symptoms persist, I will continue. Because I know the word prevails. The word prevails. These days I've learned to speak to things that don't have ears. Kingdom language, yes. I've learned to speak to things that, 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 that don't have mouths to speak back to me. I've learned to speak to the spirit of lake. I have learned to speak even in my home. I speak with the refrigerator, but I don't speak from the air. But I caught the word of God. I caught the word of God. The law of multiplication is working in my life. That two fish and five loaves, God is blessing it and it becomes enough. Where do I get it? I get it from the word of God. I want to encourage us, brethren, this morning. There is power in the word of God. There is power in the word of God. Whatever you may think of, whatever can come your way, it cannot stand against the word of God. It cannot stand. Psalm 30 verse 5 in my closing, it says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And that joy of the Lord is my strength. Where do I get it in the word of God? So even if things come along my way, I tell them, this is just for a moment. This is just for a season. This is just for a moment. This is just for a season. But my joy is coming in the morning. If my sister's joy came yesterday, praise God. But mine is also coming. Mine is also coming. I get my encouragement. Let's have time to fellowship more with God through his word. And when we pray, we pray the word of God. And it will bring forth the desired results in our lives. God bless you.